Welcome to video 5 in my introduction to web design video series. In this video I'm going to talk about CSS or cascading style sheets. So what is CSS or a cascading style sheet? First of all I'm just going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to do it and you can see the results and then I'll go into depth into why we would use them. So we're going to use a uh, global style sheet which belongs in the head. It looks something like this. Style will open and close and it has an attribute in the opening style tag that says type. So that's what it looks like. We've got our style, our style sheet, and we've got a style rule. I'm going to save it, going to launch it, and you can see. What I did is I changed all of the paragraphs in our document to have a red color. That's what a style sheet does. It changes the way your HTML will display in the browser. So let's go into detail a little bit in, in what style sheets are and, and how they evolved. A long time ago, before style sheets, we used to have to do um, quite a bit of formatting in order to change a font's color. For example, let's say I wanted to change the color of all of my H2s. I'd have to do this. Use the font tag. Font color equals yellow. I'd have to close the font tag. Okay, now I've changed the color of my H2 font. Great, but now I have one, one other H2 on the page. Um, imagine if I had 50 H2s on the page. That would take a while to edit all of those H2s and change their color. <clears throat> it took me eh, maybe about 15 seconds to change the color of that one font. So if I take that 15 seconds and multiply it by 50, I've got a lot of minutes there. And um, let's say you're doing a big job. You've got 50 H2s on each page. You've got 50 pages. That's a lot of minutes added up, changing the color of your font tags. You bring it to the client and they say, mm, I really don't think that H2s should be yellow. I think they should be green. So you change them to green. It takes you another well, 30 minutes to 40 minutes just to change all the colors of the H2s. You bring it back to your client, and the client says, that green isn't quite green enough, you know what I mean? So you don't really know what he means, but you go back, you change it to a different green, you bring it back, and finally he's okay with it. You just spent several hours just modifying the color of your H2s. Wow, that's a real hassle. So the font tag became obsolete when we started to separate our presentation from our content. Font tag is terrible. It's a waste of time when I can just do this. H2, I want you to be yellow. What this does is every single instance of H2 on this page will become yellow. So if I change it to yellow, run it in the browser, and my client doesn't like it, okay, they don't like the yellow, I want green, we'll go back to the document, change it to green. It takes three seconds to do that, change it to green. They don't like that green, okay, well, let's, let's go to um, olive, because that's another green that they might like. Oh, that's much better. Now, instead of spending several hours on modifying the color of just my H2 tags on my entire website, it would have taken me just about five seconds to get it right. So, the style sheet does a couple things. First of all, it allows you to easily and quickly 
change the presentation of any HTML element in your document. The other thing that it does is it separates your presentation from your content. It keeps those two areas separate so we have no confusion in between what types of things we're using for presentation and what types of things we're using to semantically mark up our document. If you may recall, in an earlier video I talked about syntax and semantics. Semantics is the idea that every single tag has meaning and we want to use our tags only in ways which are semantic. Well, none of the tags that we use in this current uh, version of HTML are used for presentation purposes. The reason is we have CSS to do that. So anytime you think you want to do something that's going to change the way an element looks or the way something looks in the browser, do it with a CSS solution. So now, that's the philosophy behind CSS. Let's talk about what a style tag and a style sheet actually looks like. So a style sheet. For now, in this class, I'm going to teach it by putting the style sheets up inside of the head. Not to be confused with header. Remember, header is a, is a semantic element that changes content and gives it the semantic meaning of header. The head of the document is this tag up here, which is going to hold all the utilities of the website. I said before, style sheets, links to style sheets, scripts, links to scripts, metadata, all that kind of stuff. Our style sheet goes inside of the head, in between the opening head and the closing head. I usually put it underneath the title. You can put it anywhere in the head that you want, but I usually put it under the title. Style sheet has a, a range. It has an opening and closing. You have to open it and you have to close it. If you don't close the style tag, what's going to happen is the style sheet never closes. So all of this stuff is interpreted as CSS. So if you do that, you've got a little problem. Refresh it, everything disappears. This is going to be a problem that some of you are going to have. Okay, You're going to miss your style tag, your closing style tag, and everything in your page is going to disappear and you're going to freak out a little bit. Don't freak out. First thing you should look for if everything disappears is to make sure that you have your closing style tag. If you have it, everything comes right back. Nice. So the style tag opens and closes. It has an attribute in the head. Type equals text slash CSS. We have to make sure we have this. This ensures that um, all of these things are recognized as CSS text. If you don't have that in there, your style sheet's not going to work correctly. A style sheet is made up of a series of rules. Each of these rules will modify some sort of an element. They'll choose an HTML element and modify it according to certain declarations. A rule looks like this. Okay. The rule is going to have five parts that we're concerned with. The first part we want to be concerned with is the selector. The selector is the thing that chooses which HTML element we want to modify. The next part we're going to worry about is the declaration block. The declaration block is everything that's contained in between the opening curly brace of the style rule and the closing curly brace of the style rule. The declaration can contain as many declarations as you want it to contain. It's a long block of different rules uh, that will modify all elements chosen by the selector. A declaration is one of those programming statements inside of the declaration block. A declaration has two parts. It's got a property and a value. The property and the value are separated by a colon and the value is followed by a semicolon. What the property does is it chooses which quality of that element being selected will be changed. For example, one quality could be color. So in this style rule, we've changed the paragraph's color property to red. We've also changed the border property to 5 pixels solid black and the margin property to 0 auto. The other part of the declaration is the value. The value is the rate of change or, or how the property is going to change. For example, if the property is color, the value is red. It talks about the way in which that property will change. So this is the style rule. It would be a good idea to memorize all five of these parts. Know the vocabulary. So let's look at the, one of the style rules that, I, that I've created here. Paragraph, 
I've got my curly braces which define the declaration block and I've got one declaration property color value red I can add another declaration here I'll add margin margin 3% I'm gonna save it I'm going to refresh it you can see what that margin did it created a little bit of space in between the edge of this element and the beginning of another element it spaced things out a bit I'll add another one in this declaration I've chosen to change the background color I'll change it to green make it really obnoxious save it refresh it and you can see that the background colors of these paragraphs have been changed to green now what you're seeing here is every single instance of paragraph in the page gets modified in this way so every time I put a paragraph in there it's got to behave by these rules that's one of the beautiful things about CSS is it allows you to quickly and easily make big broad changes to the way a website's going to behave. So that's the basic of a style rule.